Alright guys, so I am back again, and this video was really unplanned, but after hearing John Ostrander, the writer of the Suicide Squad comics, stating this, I had to make a video because it got to me. I really like the film, Suicide Squad, not perfect by a long shot, but a really good time in the movie theater, and for me, a lot of it was just amazing. The look, the detail, the feel of the film is not something I've seen in a superhero movie before. Look, I get it. They, the critics, have to see all the films out there, and they must be tired of all the blockbusters. If every superhero film is not The Dark Knight, they'll bitch. I think that's going on here to a certain degree, just as I came prepared to love the movie, they came prepared to hate it. That's total bullshit! Now here's something I do want to talk about, and that is the state of superhero movies in the critical eye. Now, 2016 has been filled with great superhero movies, such as Deadpool and Captain America Civil War. And let's be honest, Doctor Strange looks pretty damn good, so I'll just add that to the list. But it's also filled with bad ones, such as X-Men Apocalypse. And two of these bad ones are from DC, and they're Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. And now before you literally destroy me with words like I'm triggered, I'm triggered, I'm triggered, I'm triggered, I'm triggered, I'm triggered, I just can't. Please, stop. You can enjoy these movies. I never said you couldn't enjoy them. Like I've said, I really enjoy the Transformers movies. Bumblebee. Here's the thing. I know they're bad. But I still enjoy them. What DC supporters are doing is actually saying that DC movies are really good and saying that anyone who doesn't enjoy them are Marvel fans or stupid critics. You could not be more wrong here. Clearly Batman v Superman is full of flaws that really bring the movie down, from scripting to acting to just fucking stupidity. And Suicide Squad is full of shit like that too, but just because a movie is badly crafted doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Hell, I enjoy Batman and Robin, and it's terrible. But it's so terrible, I laugh at the awfulness and enjoy it, you see. That's a problem with ratings. Just because, you know, something has a rating, it doesn't mean it's bad. It means that that's what the general audience or critics think. But that's not what you have to think. That's the thing about art, if you can call this shit art. It's all subjective. I go to an art school, and a lot of that is super subjective. I mean, what the fuck is this? I'm being honest, I despise this. But some people act like they're standing next to the Mona Lisa. It's all based on opinion. So yeah, the DCEU has some poorly crafted movies, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy them. But when people like Ayer Fuck Marvel! and even the actors say their movies aren't bad, and worse, that they're made for the fans? That's just bullshit. As if fans can't get good movies too. And it comes down to this. People are saying Rotten Tomatoes, which is a collection of critics' reviews all gathered together and given an average percentage, is freaking biased and hates DC and loves Marvel, that's bullshit too. People are saying how Iron Man 2 and Thor 2 and Iron Man 3 can have fresh scores compared to Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Suicide Squad. Well, why don't you open up your eyes just a little bit and let's analyze these bad boys. What is up, Drum Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's go right into the news! First off, Iron Man 2. It had great characters, complex problems, even though Tony Stark was kind of acting like a pretentious douche a lot of the movie, it was warranted because he was dying. People who say this movie is shit, I think forgot about this scene. This scene. But one day you'll figure this out. And when you do, you will change the world. What is and always will be my greatest creation is you. What happens here is that these two scenes carry a lot of weight. You feel like these scenes matter because the suiting up scene is the climax of an intense attack by Whiplash. A lot of people are being threatened here. The father scene is basically what Tony Stark had to see to finally give him his confidence and hope back. It is the catalyst to what occurs later in the movie, yes, even the ridiculous creation of a new element. Congratulations, son. You have created a new element. What? Batman v Superman has one good scene the Senate bombing, but that is only done well in the Ultimate Edition. In the actual film, the film builds up to this moment, but it's a slow, 
tame buildup. There isn't much tension, because Lex, obviously a threat, is never shown as a serious threat. He just seems weird and unhinged. In the Ultimate Edition, there's a lot more stuff going on. Lex is shown as a manipulator, manipulating the lady and then having her killed. I didn't tell you the truth. Not, not only made her, threatened her. This demonstrates that Lex is a true threat and that something bad is going to happen at the hearing. So the Ultimate Edition one-ups the film released in theaters. And the movie released in theaters is what I'm counting here. Sorry, WB, you ain't winning that one. Those bastards! Let's talk about the final fights on not only these two movies, but Iron Man 3 as well. In Iron Man 2, the entire Stark Expo is in danger, and Iron Man is constantly seen saving people, removing himself from areas where there's a lot of people, and uh, this doesn't really end up going too well. Wreck the whole company! I, just, or... I think I did okay! <sighs> I, I, I quit. I'm resigning. Iron Man 2 is tense because this is about Stark redeeming himself and arriving at the expo, gets an applause literally because he's kick-ass, and metaphorically because finally he returns to his former self, something he's been fighting the entire movie, and that deserves an applause. In Iron Man 3, Pepper Potts and the friggin' president is in danger, and Aldrich Killian is a serious threat and he's also enhanced with Extremis. Bigger problem, the president is gonna be killed live, leading to the easily manipulated vice president to become president, and then all of America is screwed. What makes Tony vs. Killian interesting is that Tony basically created Killian. He created his own demon, who is now threatening Potts, the woman he loves. It all climaxes here. In Batman v Superman, <laughs> Superman fights a huge monster, Doomsday. Okay, well the fight is intense and obviously Doomsday is a threat, but we never feel Doomsday as too much of a threat, like an actual active threat, because we never see him actively destroy people who are defenseless, we just see him attack people on helicopters. And they're so far away, they just feel like toy soldiers. Their deaths are never close and personal, so we never feel anything. The fight is a massive light show with no weight thrown in. Doomsday is a punching bag for the Trinity to beat up. Now, Batman against an army of Luther's henchmen was a lot better because Batman had to not only save Martha, an innocent woman who was obviously in peril, and they did a good job in showing it and building it up, But remember, Batman's mother is also named Martha, and saving Clark's Martha is a symbolic way of giving Bruce a second chance and saving a mother that could be lost to some no-good fiends. I actually think that Batman v Superman should have ended with Batman and Superman clashing, and Batman realizing the error of his ways and saving Martha. That should have been the climax to me. Anyway, another hated movie, for some reason, is Thor 2. Why? It's not amazing, but it's good. It's just good. It has great moments, and even though the movie could not handle when to place comedic moments, it had scenes like this. And this. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Shh. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll tell Father what you did here today. I didn't do it for him. say that that isn't badass. Problem Store 2 had was its shit villain, and I mean bad, like cliche as hell. This guy was intimidating at points, but he was just mostly boring. Right after Loki's death, you get hit with this. It's not me. Hello? Hi, Jane. It's 
Now, Man of Steel is being compared, so what's wrong with Man of Steel? First off, it makes Pac Kent seem like a total dick. I just wanted to help. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. We also have a death scene with Jor-El, which is great, if it was, you know, halfway into the movie. You get the gravity of the situation, but there's no weight because you don't know him. What is done well is how the final battle is handled. We really feel like people are in peril, unlike Batman v Superman. What's done wrong is that Superman doesn't save shit. But we do get this, in my opinion, though unsupermanish, was a very great scene. It's the climax of the entire movie. The entire reason why Superman is felt alone is because he's the only one of his species, and now that he knows that there are more Kryptonians, he has to kill the last surviving one that isn't him. It's a great way to end a movie. That's why to me, Man of Steel felt like a Michael Bay explosion fest, but it had enough heart to provide a solid start to the DCEU. This was ruined quickly by Batman v Superman, and now completely annihilated by Suicide Squad. And if I had Suicide Squad footage with me, that would be great. But I don't. Not even pirated footage. So we'll all have to wait for that. I will say the best scene in Suicide Squad was a bar scene, where all the characters finally quietly interact and share with each other. But still, it isn't enough to really bolster an emotional response from the audience. I think a good part of Suicide Squad was in the end. You know, in the final battle, but there's a spoiler there and I don't want spoilers. And uh, yeah, that wasn't supposed to be a joke. Like, I think a good part of Suicide Squad was the end. When it ended and the credits rolled. No, that wasn't that. <laughs> that wasn't gonna be that. There's an actual scene in the end, but uh, I can't say that. So yeah, those are my two cents on why, even though it's not a competition, but low-key it totally is. Marvel is beating the crap out of DC in the movies department. Suicide Squad had a piss-poor attempt at having heart with Deadshot and his daughter, but that's not even the heart of the story. The real heart is Rick Flagg and June Moon, the Enchantress, and that's sidelined for the fake heart of the story, the Deadshot one. And it's really just frustrating. To be honest, Suicide Squad was way worse than BVS, guys. It makes Batman v Superman look amazing, I'm being honest here. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. If you like what you just saw, then please like, comment your opinion. If you disagree with me, that's fine, I love you. If you bash me for having a different opinion than you, well then you're an idiot, and I still love you. Thank you guys for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.